Welcome back to Python with Andrew. We're going to continue on with our series on connecting Python with a simple database in using MySQL. Now, I'm going to carry on from the last video. In the last video, I showed you how you need to connect to a, an SQL database. So for this video, I'm going to assume that you've already done that uh, or watched that video so that you've already got your SQL database uh, loaded on your um, local computer and also uh, you've created a table, etc. If you haven't already done that, then just jump back and have a look at the previous video on connecting to uh, Python uh, and SQL. I'll try and insert a card so you can click to that. So in that, we created a simple parts database where we have the name of the part, the uh, price of the part, and the amount of stock we have. So we're sort of building an inventory database. Now, what I did mention is the way I'm going to approach this is I'm not going to focus too much on SQL at this stage. We'll grow into that. So I'm not going to talk about it uh, a lot of the um, relational database topics like normalization and, and um, designing your database, etc. At this stage, I'm keeping it very simple. I've got one table um, as if we were doing an Excel file uh, for our database. So very, very simple database. Uh, we'll get more complex as we go along. What I'm really interested at the moment is we get some good practice on the basics of using Python as the application to drive the data with our database. Um, in the first video, I just showed us how to actually connect and then print the table. We're going to move on and we're going to insert records into the table, insert new items that we get delivery of, say, for our inventory system, and then also update our inventory um, which would happen if we bought new stock in, but it also happened if we sold stock. Um, so we're going to create two simple pro, um, pro, uh, functions that call um, and like manipulate the database using SQL. And you'll see the SQL commands that I'm using, very, very simple commands, but also that they're, they're the basics you need to get some good practice on. And we'll look at a couple of techniques as we go along. So let's jump over and uh, see where we were at before. So this is the code I had before. And just to summarize, we're importing the module um, so we can connect to our SQL database. I'll define a function connect uh, SQL, which returns a database connection. Uh, so I'm going to minimize that and get it out of the way. And then I created a basic uh, print table, it actually prints only the parts table, um, just so we can see our output. And I'm, so I'm going to minimize that. And so the, the way we left it in the last video, we connected to the database and then we printed the table. So let's do that uh, straight away just to see uh, what we've got uh, there. And you'll see that I've got, um, oh, sorry, I put, clicked that twice. Let me. If I just do it once, um, you'll see that I've got a few items in the database with some quantities and some costs. Okay, so nothing, nothing fancy there. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, look at the next function I want to write, which is uh, insert part. And I'm going to take a database. And I'm going to take a name, a price, and a stock as my variables. Um, so assuming we're getting that, maybe someone we're asking the person to key that in. Um, this function is just going to take that information and create a new row in the database. Okay. So first of all, db cursor uh, equals my db my db dot cursor and let me actually put 
the database. I always tell everyone, make sure they comment their functions so I better, better practice what I preach. And then um, normally down here, we're going to put db cursor.execute. Execute um, some SQL statement. Now, the SQL statement I want to uh, insert is going to be using the insert command. Um, and I'm going to insert it into the parts database. Now, I could put it all in this one line, but I want to introduce a new concept, and that is to, if you like, build the query and build the values uh, as we go along. Uh, and this becomes uh, really useful because then we can test things much better. Insert um, into parts. Values percent s percent s percent s. Okay, and then values are going to be uh, name, price, stock. Value equals that. So what I've done there is I've gone and I've created the SQL, but I haven't embedded the actual variables in there. Uh, I could, um, but I've just done it as, if you like, um, percent %s. And with the percent %s, that means that I'm going to fill that placeholder uh, in, in a different way. So down here, I'm going to ex ex SQL and then value. So that the format of this ex execute command is what's your, if you like, line and what are all your parameters? This is actually a good technique to get used to for a couple of reasons. We could test this uh, SQL on its own. We could test it with the database um, just to make sure that it, it works okay before we put it in there. If we're not sure of the syntax, et cetera. The second thing, and we'll talk about it at a later video, it also prevents um, what's called SQL injection. And that uh, is a security problem. If we were to take that the data from the user, um, they could actually stick in malicious SQL code. But we'll talk about that in another video. All I'd like you to know is that uh, a technique that is common used is to set up the SQL query with parameters and then create um, the uh, parameters there and execute. Now, the other thing we do need to do, whenever we are modifying the data, we need to um, commit the changes. Database commit, right? And that's because until we do that, Right. We have only, if you like, set it up so that we can change the data. We actually haven't um, enforced that. Uh, and that's important, especially when we have multi-user and we're all working on the database at different times. We want to make sure that there's a point where people say, I'm committing this code, whether it's one line or 10 lines, um, before the the database is, uh, is, if you like, unlocked for other people to use it. Again, we might talk about that in a later video. Suffice to say, to keep it very simple, when we are um, building these functions, we're going to use this, set up the cursor, and then we're going to, um, if you like, have an SQL command with the parameters, and then do the execute and commit um, all the time. Okay, so now if we, down the bottom here, we could try and test this. Well, let's go insert part, a new part, and let's call it, um, I don't know, um, spade. Spade, which costs, I think price is next, just costs $25.25. .25. And we have 
um, six of them, right? And then I'm going to print the table out again. All right. So now if I save that and clear that, we should get, oh, I get a line error. Missing required stop. Oops, sorry, I forgot to put in the actual database as a parameter. Okay. So, and I'm going to use this technique of having a database and always passing it into the function. Again, good practice, um, especially when we start using tables, different tables, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's good practice. In a sense, it is a global variable anyway, so I don't have to do that um, because the date, date, you know, the database is global. I could set it up as a global parameter, but I much prefer to explicitly pass it through um, to my um, functions. So let's try that. And we can see that um, we've added spade down the bottom here, okay? And I could add another one. Just change it. Um, and fork, which is $25. All right, and you can start seeing that my database is growing uh, each time uh, that I, I do this. Okay, I probably should have a, a new line after this. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll fix this print table at the end here. I might just have a And uh, well, let's have 16 of those. And now, uh, and cool. so my database is continuing to grow. Um, that's quite nice. We can see it as we, we go along. So it's a nice, easy way of, of testing it. What's important for us is we've got this one function here. Right. It has the same sort of features that we're going to use a lot. In fact, when I do my next one, you'll, you'll see I'm just copying and pasting and making a change to the actual uh, SQL, right? which, is a, which is a good thing. So it's we set up the cursor, we create our SQL, we create our parameters, we execute on our database, and then we commit it. Okay. So... Let me see if I can do exactly like I said, and let's create an update. In this case, I'm going to update uh, update stock. And update stock, I'm going to take the name and I'm going to take the stock, um, or I'm going to call it quantity, because stock is what's already in there. I'm going to add quantity to it. All right, so update. Uh, stock in the database. Um, and I'm going to use update parts and I'm going to say set stock equal to stock plus quantity or plus my variable, I should say, um, where name equals my other variable, my other parameter, okay? So I think my syntax is correct. Set stock, lowercase link. Yeah. Um, and my variable, Values are name and uh, quantity. Well, actually, it's quantity first. I'm a name because I put my parameters there. Yeah, I should learn to spell. Okay, so I'm going to execute that SQL with the values and commit. Now, Hopefully, let me just try and uh, I'm gonna 
change that. Now I'm going to do update stock and I'm going to change the, the nuts. We're going to buy um, 20 of them. Right. So before I go back and explain this, let me um, let me just minimize that because we're only focusing on that one there. Uh, let me clear my code and let's see if it runs. Now, I thought I'd have an error. Um, again, same error as I made before, and that is I forgot to name my database. You'd think after a while I would remember this, but uh, not the case. Okay, you can see that we've changed the this line here. We've added 20 from the early one. So our updating is working. Okay, so let's have a quick look at um, what we've done there. Our update function takes the name and the quantity we want to update. So we're adding stock if we receive it into our database, into our inventory database. We set the cursor to the start of the database. We create, and I've used this update um, SQL command. The update command takes the database, or sorry, takes the table you want to update. And it says, what do you want to set? What do you want to change? In this case, we want to change the stock value to the old stock value plus whatever the new the new number is. All right. So, and if we then we say the next part of the SQL is, uh, if you like, clarifying which records do we want to change. If we didn't have that there, it would change every um, stock in the database and update it by ten or twenty, etc. In this case, I want to say. What's the condition? Well, the condition is I want the name to be my second uh, parameter there. Okay, so the name is, in this case, the nuts. So remember, if I didn't change that, it would change everything, which doesn't sort of make sense. It's rare that you might, you'd might you want to do too many there. Now, you can imagine examples where, let's say, if we had a da an employee database and everyone was going to get a 10% pay rise, that's when we might say, well, let's set the the pay to the pay plus ten percent, and we wouldn't qualify to say it's only for Andrew or only for this employee. We'd say everyone. Okay, so you don't. This is optional, but the reality is you pretty well always want that there. Um, so uh, that that's important. So that's the update command. We're sort of saying change one of the values in our database. Okay. And again, same, I put the values. Make sure they, they match the same order. The first mistake I made was I put name first and quantity, and obviously that matches my function but doesn't match the SQL. And then I execute it and then commit it. Okay. So that's a, another example of a simple function that if you look at it, it looks very similar to the one uh, above it in terms of same sort of format. And the only thing that's really changing is the SQL, what we're doing to the SQL. Right. And last but not least, hopefully this will also work if I, if someone comes and buys one, right? So hopefully this will also work for negative numbers. And it does, which is good. Uh, we now see there's 29 um, and not 30. So what I like about this update stock, it both works for money for stock coming in, stuff that we've bought, and stock going out, stuff that we have sold. So that's nice because the function is a bit more general than writing out, you know, bring in stock or take out stock. So what just to summarize what we've done we've got this very, very, very simple inventory database. It just has one table. It has, you know, three, three things in there. And we've said, well, the basic functions we need to do, we, we, we need to print it out, right? So we need a print um, table function, uh, which we built. Now, this is not the most exciting printout. We could do it much prettier than that, but that's another day. We also need to insert or add, and we also need to update stock. We could argue that we should also have a delete part, um, and, and, and that's probably true. Uh, we could do that. But at this stage, 
we might just say that if the quantity is zero, then we're not likely to, to, to use it anymore, right? Um, so we could continue to improve these functions and they would just get a bit more complex. And you'll see that we're sort of like making the rules in Python. And a really good example of that is I've just updated the stock with negative one. Um, and that means that we are selling something. Well, of course, if we don't have stock, we can't sell it. So I should probably have in here to say, if there's a negative number, a negative quantity, right, I need to check that we already have enough stock. Right? So if I'm, if I, if the quantity is whatever the quantity is, it's got to be greater than, uh, sorry, less than the stock on hand. Otherwise, we can't update this, or we have a negative number uh, in stock. So that would work from SQL's point of view. It's just a negative number, but it doesn't meet the business rule. And this is why I think it should be in the Python part of your code, because in the Python, we're going to do the error checking. We would want to check, does that stock, uh, is it greater than the quantity we want? We also might check, does that stock actually exist? Do we have something called nuts? All right. So we're doing these checking in our Python code, which match our business rules. And we're leaving the database to keep nice and simple, nice and simple. All right. That doesn't change these SQL statements either. It changes you know, some of the checking we might do um, beforehand. OK, so some things to think about. Uh, try and expand your basic um, inventory table and try and add some of these functions. Try to add a delete, see what the SQL command is, and see if you can build it very similar to that. All right. And when we come back in another video, we'll start building our database a bit more complex and have a bit more complex SQL queries. Again, thanks for uh, joining. And uh, always remember, please subscribe or please uh, pass this on to other people you might, not, you might know. Thank you.